If you're looking for information on how to access the state automated additional pay system, this short video will show you how to input your additional work, monitor and view your current employment balance, and submit your pre-authorization so work can begin. Let's get started. A pre-authorization is required before work can begin. To submit a state authorization, visit the CSUN homepage at csun.edu, log into the portal using your CSUN username and password. If you're faculty, use your faculty tab. If you're staff, use your staff tab. Locate the additional pay pagelet and select the state preauthorization link. You'll see two tabs on the additional pay state pre-auth page. First, the find an existing value tab, and second, the add a new value tab. Choose the add a new value tab to create a new pre-authorization request. Choose the find an existing value tab to view any pre-authorizations already entered that you are associated with. You can enter search criteria in any of the displayed fields to narrow the results. This video includes a demonstration on how to enter a pre-authorization for job code 2403 and for job code 4660. I'll start with job code 2403, which can only be used for full-time faculty. Enter the employee ID for the person requesting the pre-auth. You may enter a pre-authorization for yourself or another employee. Next, select the department the employee is in and enter the job code, which for this example will be 2403. The next field is the position number field. If you do not know the position number, use the lookup icon to view the department's position numbers. The last field that populates is the term field. Enter the term the work will be done in. This cannot be a past term, however it may be a future term. Select the add button to continue. The request for additional pay pre-authorization page displays. At the top you'll see information about the employee and the application status. The application status will reflect the submission process and changes as the pre-auth moves through the approval stages. Pay particular attention to the FTE counts section. This section shows the available time the employee has to work for additional pay. The 2403 job code calculates in months, so the available months field displays what is available to work in months. Also check the used and requested fields this field cannot exceed 1.25. In the pre-authorization section, you will need to start your pre-auth by selecting the link that says Set Payments for Job Code 2403. On the Pay Period Calculator page, begin with the Amount Due field. This is the amount agreed upon for payment. Tab or click in the Hours Per Week field this indicates how many hours you'll need to work per week to complete the job. The start month will default to the next pay period or change it to reflect the month the work will begin. And the last field is the number of pay periods. This indicates how many pay periods it will take to complete the work. Once you tab out of the field, you'll see how much you'll be paid over the course of each pay period you designated. If the amount due, hours per week, or number of pay periods exceed the maximum allowed, you will see a warning that reads, monthly rate exceeds maximum allowed. When this happens, you'll need to either decrease the hours worked per week or increase the number of pay periods. Once you're done with this page, select the Return to Main Page button. You'll see the start and end dates are now automatically filled in along with the estimated compensation. You must indicate the description of work. For this example, I'll enter Researching for Sustainability Best Practices on 
composting, and gardening. The funding information is not required, but can be filled out by your college or department. If you want to add a note or comment to your pre-auth, you can select the Add to Notes slash Comments button. Now your pre-auth is filled out, you can choose Save to Come Back to it later, choose Submit if you are done and want to send it for authorization, and Delete if it was created in error. I'll choose Submit. Once you've submitted your pre-auth, you'll see the application status area change. Also, an email notification will go to the next approver or approvers until your request has completed the pre-authorization process. For only the job code 2403, you will not have to enter a payment authorization request. Now, let's switch to the job code 4660. This job code is to be used by staff and all part-time faculty. There are slight differences in entering time worked for this job code. To add the pre-authorization requisition, I'll choose the Add a New Value tab again. I'll enter the employee ID for the person who will be working for the additional pay, include the department, the 4660 job code, and position number. One slight difference from the 2403 job code is that you'll need to enter the start date of the job and end date of the job. Once you're finished, select the Add button. The Request for Additional Pay Preauthorization page displays. At the top, you'll see information about the employee and the application status. The application status will reflect the submission process and change as the pre-auth moves through the approval stages. In the pre-authorization section, the start and end dates have populated from the previous page. Below, you'll need to enter the daily compensation rate that was agreed upon and the number of days it will take to complete the work. The last required field on the page is the description of work field. I'll enter a description of work proctoring midterm exam. In the FTE Counts section, pay attention to the Available Days number. This tells you how many days of work you have available to work for additional pay. The funding information is not required, but can be filled out by your college or department. And if you want to add a note or comment to your pre-auth, you can select the Add to Notes slash Comments button. Now that your pre-auth is filled out, you can choose the Save button to come back later. Choose Submit if you are done and want to send it for authorization, and Delete if it was created in error. I'll choose Submit. Once you've submitted your pre-auth, you'll see the application status area change. An email notification will go to the next approver or approvers until your request is complete. And congratulations, you are done.